kicking around. We're going to be back in the book of Genesis, if you don't know where that's at, the very first book in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we've got a Bible we would love to give you. And just let us know. We'll make sure you get one before you go today. I've got some blue Bibles in my office. There's some out in the Welcome Center, and we will make sure you get to take one of those home with you. Otherwise, uh, if you didn't bring a Bible, there are some in the pews, or pews in the chairs. And then also the uh, iPhones, iPads, Androids, whatever you've got. Uh, the U version of the Bible is a great app, if you've not used that before. A great tool. There's lots of tools anymore that you can use for uh, charting your prayers, for reading your Bible, for doing daily devotions. Um, U version is a nice one because it kind of allows you to incorporate a number of different things. If you'd like a Bible reading plan, it, it, there's a whole bunch of those available to you on on that app. And so a bunch of different things you can use devotionally. Um, you can actually take notes and it will save your notes if you create an account. And if you're like me, um, I, I, I was just noticing today, actually, as I flipped into this Bible. Um, this is not the Bible I normally study out of, but there's just writing orange and blue all over on the inside of this Bible. And I didn't even know I studied Genesis at some point with this Bible. So I, I like to write on my Bibles and I think that's okay. I encourage people to write on your Bibles. You're not going to ruin it. Uh, make notes right all over it. It's, it's a good thing. Um, now, don't do it if you checked it out from the library, but if it's your Bible, write all over it, okay? Um, and that's fine. But we're going to be in Genesis, Genesis 28, and, and we're looking at the life of, of a man uh, by the name of Jacob. And the sermon series is called Blessed, and we started this off last week. And if you were here for our 21 days of prayer, uh, you'll know that I actually started this series of 21 days of prayer stealing one of my sermons out of this series because it corresponded with the 21 days of prayer. And, and in that one, it was the very first week of the 21 days of prayer, so back in the second week of January, we kind of kicked off looking at uh, Jacob and the blessing in Jacob's life and, and, and all of how that went. And that very first sermon was, was, of course, about how Jacob actually wrestled with God and, of course, uh, wouldn't let go of God until God would give him his blessing. And, and God, he basically, you know, imaginary, but has gotten a headlock and he won't let go, right? And God touches him on the hip and kind of knocks his hip out of socket. And then they reach some sort of accord, some sort of agreement. And, and Jacob ends up being blessed within that. And that, that was the, the first one of those. And then um, last week we talked a little bit about Jacob and Esau, these two brothers, uh, twins. Um, Esau is the older brother. He was born first, Jacob a little bit after as a twin. And uh, looked at that portion of the story. And, and we learned out of this the big idea for this whole series. The one thing that if you don't get anything else that I want to make sure that you hear. And I'll repeat it time and time again. That it's that one very thing that I want you to hear is that God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. And so I'd like you all to say that together just to make sure you all heard it today. Will you say it with me? God doesn't bless us because we deserve it, right? God blesses us because he chooses to in spite of, in spite of our mistakes, in spite of our failures, in spite of whatever attempts I might make at trying to gain that blessing, despite whatever I might do to mess things up, God blesses me anyhow, right? If God decides to bless, then we're going to be blessed, regardless of what kind of screw-up we might, ha might possibly be. Now, that doesn't, of course, mean that everything's always going to work out the way in which we wish that it would, but it does mean that we are blessed. And when I use the word blessed throughout today and throughout this series, the definition that I'm using for blessing is blessed equals God's good fortune, strength, and his presence in my life. And so last week I, I, I kind of ended off by, by telling you that if you really want God's blessing in your life, if you really want that to be the trajectory for your family, for your career, for, for your life, for whatever it will be, you have to begin by very simply asking God for his blessing. One of the things James talks about in the New Testament, this is both a New Testament and Old Testament idea, is, is that we have not because we ask not. Now that doesn't mean God is some magic genie in the sky, we rub his belly and we get three wishes or something like that. That's not how it works. But oftentimes, we don't seek God for his blessing. Uh, we try to do it ourselves. We try to earn it ourselves. We try to go about it our own way. And, and we need to seek God Begin to ask God for his blessing. 
and that is when he will give it to you. And so far we've read this, this first part of the story of Jacob, and this is kind of a summary from what we got last week. Um, last week, if you weren't here, you missed out on this great story. Great, maybe a little irony for it, but it's, a, it's an interesting story. Uh, Jacob and his mother plotted together and conned his dying father, or at least they thought he was dying. They conned his dying father and stole his older brother's blessing. And so where we left off the story last week, is right as Esau discovers that Jacob had stolen this blessing. And of course, mom says, hey, Jacob, you better run, right? So Jacob is now on the lamb. He's on the run because Esau wants to kill him for stealing his blessing. So we're going to pick that up again today here in Genesis 28. And that's where we're going to be exclusively today. So if you want to open up and follow along, Genesis 28, and you're going to see what happens next in this crazy story of the life of Jacob. Now at some point as we go through this story, and at the, some point in our life, we all probably have had a struggle with this question. Maybe you've had this question. I know I have. And, and the question is simply, is God looking out for me? Right? Does God actually care about what's happening in my life? Maybe you or someone in your family were, were going through some personal tragedy, right? Uh, maybe you lost a job or... or, or Maybe you were just doing some soul searching, and, and, and you might find yourself asking questions just like this. And these questions become especially tough when you feel like you keep running into bad break after bad break after bad break, right? When, when nothing in life seems to be going your way. Does God, does God really care? Is He really paying attention to me? Does He care what's, what's happening in my life? I know I've had those questions. I've had those roll through my, my thick skull a time or two over my life, right? I've had family members get sick. I, I've had friends and family members die or nearly die, right? I remember just a few years ago watching my mother nearly die from an aortic aneurysm. Seeing that. And, and you know, my mom's a, a great lady. And you begin to wonder, why? Why is this? Why her? Why now, right? Or how about those times when you just... Oh, I, don't even, I don't even know how we're going to make ends meet. I remember being the newlywed, right? Like literally once a month, we'd get together and we'd look at our finances and we'd go, I don't know how we made it another month, but praise the Lord, it's amazing. Here we are, one month further. And then for a while, it was that way. It was just like, how do we do it? I don't know, it was God, right? But then, of course, in the midst of all those kinds of things, something else breaks, Right? It always seems to be the thing that happens. You, 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 you think you knocked the transmission out of your van, right? And then the next week, one of your tenants calls and says, we broke the water, the dryer, and, and we're going to be late on rent. And, you know, just things after things after things happen in life, right? And you're like, oh, not another one. Oh, not another one. It's just kind of like a blow after blow after blow happens. And you, you're going, God, are you paying attention to what's happening here? Do you care about me? And sometimes it's just those days where you just look and go, I don't know, I think I might be failing as a father or as a husband or as a pastor. I mean, I just, God, are you paying attention to what's going on here, right? And all of us, every one of us, I believe, uh, will encounter something that, that causes us to, to wonder, just how much do you care, God? Just how interested are you in what's actually going on in my life at the moment? The story that we're going to read today is going to show us Jacob in, in that very exact spot. So let's uh, read Genesis 28 starting in verse 10. I'm going to read through 16 if you'd like to follow along. You'll see it on the screen or pull out a Bible if you'd like. And in Genesis 28:10 it says, Jacob had left the town of Beersheba. Remember, Esau wants to kill him. He left the town of Beersheba and started out for Haran. At sunset, he stopped for the night and he went to sleep, resting his head on a large rock. In a dream, he saw a ladder that reached from the earth to heaven, and God's angels were going up and down on it. The Lord was standing beside the ladder and said, I am the Lord God who was worshipped by Abraham and Isaac. I will give to you and your family the lands on which you are now sleeping. Your descendants will spread over the earth in all directions and will become as numerous as the specks of dust, as, as, as numerous as the number of seeds of sand, right? 
Your family will be a blessing to all people. Wherever you go, I will watch over you, and then later I will bring you back to this land. I won't leave you. I will do all the things that I have promised. Jacob woke up suddenly and thought, The Lord is in this place, and I didn't even know it. So here it is again, right? There's just something about the story of Jacob. We talked about this a little bit last week. As you read this story, there's something about the story that doesn't feel right. Jacob is on the run. His brother wants to kill him. He just stole his brother's lesson. He, he, just, he just conned his father. And now in a dream, God's talking to him, right? I mean, here's the guy. He grew up, he was a nobody from a backwater town. He's not good at, I mean, if you read the story, he's not good at regular guy stuff, right? Esau, he goes out, he hunts, he fishes, he farms, he does the manly stuff, right? Jacob, no. He's not good at guy stuff. And then he and his mom plot together. They con his dying father. They steal from his only brother. And then he's on the run because of all of this stupidity. And God shows up and says, you're blessed. Wow. Thank you, God. Right? Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. God tells him that he is going to make his family into a great nation and eventually bring him back home. He says, wherever you go, I'll go with you. Whatever you do, I'm there with you. And I'm going to bring you back and all of this is going to be your land and your offspring are going to be on beyond count, basically, right? And if you're like me, when you read that and you, you know the backstory here, you go, he doesn't deserve to come back home, Right? I mean, fine, he got away with it, but don't reward him for this behavior, God. But this story is going to once again remind us that God does not bless us because we deserve it. He blesses us in spite of us. And over the years, as I've read the Bible, this has kind of become one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And, and I refer back to it often, at least mentally more than anything, as just this, this reminder that kind of when I'm down, right, when I'm struggling, when, when I'm wondering, I use this story to remind me that God doesn't see me like I see myself. So today I want to give you two things that I just love about this story. And the first one is simply this. Sometime... Sometimes God's blessing feels like you're using a rock as a pillow. Did you catch it? He used a large rock as a pillow, right? Sometimes God's blessing, when he's blessing us, it feels like you're using a rock as a pillow. Anyone else like me, do you have to have a really good pillow to be able to sleep? Right? I'm the kind of person, when I travel, I take my pillow with me. I will take less clothes, I will leave spare underwear to save space, for my pillow. I don't like other pillows. I want my pillow. Not even two of your pillows could possibly equal one of my pillows. Nothing will ruin a good night's sleep like a bad pillow. Plus, I'm always a little bit grossed out using somebody else's pillow because I'm never quite sure how much drool you have poured into that pillow before I'm using it. Have you seen the stains? Ah! Gross. Right? You're laughing because you've seen them. <laughs> when I say the phrase, God's blessing, almost all of us think of something positive, right? Something glamorous, success. But sometimes God's blessing in our lives are the things that actually keep us up at night, or the things that, that actually make us uncomfortable. Because blessing does not equal comfort. Let me give you a real life example. I remember when my wife was pregnant with our son. It was a rough pregnancy for her. Most pregnancies, the ladies gain weight. My wife lost weight being pregnant. It wasn't just morning sickness. It was always sickness. It was, it was, it was misery. And it was hard for me. It was harder for her. I'll give her credit for that. But it was hard for me because I couldn't do anything for her. I couldn't help her. There was nothing I could do. I was completely helpless in the situation. I don't want to go into all the details, but she was miserable for months and months and months and months. 
And that pregnancy seemed to last forever while she was sick. Yet, in the midst of that, within her, she carried an amazing blessing. But it was that blessing that was the cause of all of that misery. Right? Without her many months of suffering, we would not have our blessing. Blessing does not always mean comfort. Think about where you are in life right now. What are some of the blessings in your life that maybe don't actually feel like blessings right now? Maybe it causes you fear or keeps you up at night. Maybe it won't allow you to have peace or make you feel comfortable at all. Some of us, it's, it's having a job, right? Sometimes our job does not feel like a blessing, does it? But do you know how many people are praying right now wishing that they had your job? The job that you probably hate? Getting up every day and going to that job doesn't always feel like a blessing, does it? But it's the way God is blessing you to take care of your family, to to provide for your needs, to give you what you want. It doesn't feel like it, maybe. But if you have a job, you are blessed. Or or how about your spouse, right? Don't, Don't elbow them during this part. Maybe some things in the relationship right now are causing you pain, keeping you up at night. Maybe, maybe they don't feel like they're a blessing. You don't feel blessed to have them. But God is probably blessing you through it anyhow. He's blessed you with somebody to share your life. Someone to be part of everything with you. There's many blessings in our lives like this that don't feel like blessings. We could go on and on and on. I could tell you about my car. Right? Doesn't always feel like it's a blessing. But it sure beats walking from town all the way out here for work. Hey, 60 years ago, people took a horse out, right? They didn't, everybody didn't have a car. We can keep going with examples of ways and places where we are blessed, but it doesn't feel like a blessing. There are, there are things in our lives that are blessings, but they just don't feel like blessings right now, do they? Maybe you have a kid who causes trouble. Maybe you're losing someone that you love. Maybe it's some type of hardship that you're going to have to endure, but all of it is a blessing, nonetheless. So sometimes, God's blessing feels like you're using a rock for a pillow. But then there's that that other thing that I love about this story. I said I had two things. And we find that in verse 16. It says, Jacob woke up suddenly and thought, the Lord is in this place and I didn't even know it. Right? So the second one is this. Usually the times when I feel like God is the farthest away from me is when he is actually the closest to me. Story of Jonah, great example. And some of you are in a a place in your life right now. Something has happened that has caused you to feel like God God feels like He's a million miles away from me. Maybe you're on the run from some sort of mistake that you made, or maybe it was something done to you. But you feel alone. Like there's no way that that God is anywhere near close to you, and God God doesn't know what's going on in your life, and God isn't... You're not sure if he's really there for you. But that's not true. Most of the time that we think God is not near by choice, by his choice, right? (coughs) Excuse me for just a second. Ah, that dry winter air. When we think that God isn't near... When we think that God isn't close to us, we think oftentimes that's because He's choosing not to be close to us. I mean, we know that He's all-powerful. We know He's he's all-loving. But we assume He isn't near to us because He's choosing not to be near to us because of something we did or something done to us. But it's actually the opposite of that. 
God doesn't get down on us like we get down on ourselves, right? And those times in our lives where, where God feels the farthest away from us are actually the times where He is the very much closest to us. Now, that's a sort of fallacy. <coughs> God is never nearer or farther from us. I want to be clear about that. It's our feelings. God is always with us. God is for us. And if God could be for us, who could be against us, right? But think about the story of Jesus for an example, right? Jesus, God's very Son. Jesus, hanging on the cross, felt like God had forsaken him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But had God forsaken him? No. Because what was happening on the cross was the greatest blessing ever for all of mankind. Think about that for a moment. Anybody looking in on this experience of Jesus, God's Son, looking in on his last days, seeing what he went through, tortured, and then on the cross, right? You would see that as not a blessing in any way. Uh, That doesn't look like a blessing. I mean, I've seen the passion of the Christ. That did not look like a blessing. But it was. We know we are blessed beyond measure of If we're honest. And in the darkest moments, God is there in amazing and abundant ways. And just as in the darkest moments in all of the history of the world, when Christ was being crucified, God was there, so too is He there for you, even if it doesn't feel like it. God is there. You can try to run from God like Jonah. You can find yourself in the bottom of the belly of a whale in the midst of an ocean. Was he any further from God? No. Not even a little bit. God is still there no matter what. We just have to look for it. And so some of us are in a place kind of like Jacob, right? Where... But we kind of sometimes feel like God isn't near. We kind of wonder, God, where are you in this situation? But if you will just for a second slow down, kind of take a look around, I think you will see and say the same thing that Jacob said. God is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Jacob was on the run for his very life. He didn't know at that point that he would ever see his family again. He didn't know where life would take him. He probably didn't have much but a bag of clothes on his back, sleeping with his head on a rock for a pillow. And yet, he awoke realizing, you know what, I thought I was lost and gone, but no, God is here with me. God is in this place and I didn't even know it. So what do we do with this story today? What does the con artist on the run from his angry brother teach us? Well, I think it teaches us that we can find hope here. I think what we learn is that even when life seems at its very darkest, and maybe when we feel the very least blessed, we are blessed nonetheless. Folks, God is with us, and God is for us. And while maybe your life could be a mess right now, the good news is God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. And that is indeed a good thing. Amen? Let's pray.